This is Night Force Action Report for July 16th, 2013. From HorribleNight.com, I am your host, Justin Lacey. Joining me this evening is Ethan Moses. Hey, everybody. How's it going, man? (laughs) You've got all kinds of energy, Ethan. I've got a ton of energy. I'm like, what would be the opposite of my my state would be stiff, would be the opposite of my state. We wouldn't want that. We wouldn't want that at all. Especially... Uh, for the debut, the Horrible Night debut of Jason Thompson. What's up, Jason? Not much. Thanks Not for coming on the show, all. buddy. No problem. Um, so, yeah, your your future endeavors with Horrible Night depend entirely on your performance tonight, so no pressure. That is that is totally fine. Okay. I'm, I'm prepared. I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, we'll kind of get to what, you, what you're working on and why you're here a little bit later. Um, but, Ethan, uh, tell me something about ping pong. Oh shit, dude! <laughs> so we've been playing a ton of ping pong. Uh, my wife went out to the bike shop the other day. Uh, I don't know, how, you know, what happened, <laughs> but on the way there, she instead, instead of getting a basket for her bike, she got ping pong paddles and for her bike, ping pong for her yeah, bike. Yeah, like it's like a bike with ping. Nah, she just I guess forgot the bike aspect of it. Just got the ping pong paddles. Either way. I ended up with ping pong paddles. It was exciting, and I was excited about that. And then because we have a ping pong table outside, and we played them. How much? A ton of ping pong okay. outside. In the outside. And we just... And I think she, you're holding back. I think you might have played a fuck ton. No, we played... No, we didn't quite... But I, I feel like an hour is like a ton. Two hours is a shit ton, which is how long we played. Okay. Three hours is a fuck ton. And then four hours means... Um, huh. You know, you just need so we're writing this down? Yeah, a lot I'm, of, glad yeah, we're, I'm, I'm glad we're classifying ping pong here. It's, it's legit. It's a legit amount of ping pong. Dude, she's good. Holy shit. Like she was doing, like she was, she was all Chinese up on me with that. Like she was playing some badass ping pong. I'm just, it was great. I, I, I thought, time. I thought before you got married, that was just one of the marriage tests was the ping pong tournament. But apparently, did you guys I'm, actually play ping pong during the actual marriage ceremony? <laughs> Excuse me, we're gonna need to take a break real quick and uh, need to test her ping pong skills out real quick. Uh, but I guess ping pong is different than table tennis, so maybe we were playing table tennis. So yeah, it technically <laughs> is. I don't. I I and I think the rest of America don't don't know the difference. Okay. So how far from the edge of the table were you standing? I was real close. I was real okay. tight on that. Well, then table. that's not table tennis. Okay, so it was ping pong. I mm-hmm. ponged it up. Okay, good. I'm fine. I have played ping pong with the tennis racket. Have you really? Yeah, I was. Hmm. You know, confused. When you play <laughs> tennis in high school, you do things with tennis rackets that yeah normal people do well, not. You, you used to make like spread peanut butter on sandwiches with tennis rackets and like no open never I would never do that kind of, you were kind of weird they called you, you tennis hands you know how I feel about thing. peanut butter that would never happen <laughs> that I is, guess that isn't true yeah that's truly a, a lot rude assumption Ethan yeah <laughs> so is she good or you suck I felt like I was doing good here's here's the way I look at it intensity wise I was all up on it but I made a lot of mistakes she was. Like cool and consistent, she was she was like leveled out the whole time, and she made me look silly. Yeah, no, she's good. Uh, <laughs> you know, not great, but she's good, better than me. So I'm not good. So, congratulations, Aubrey. Anything else going on, man? Um, I, I I will warn anybody that happens to go to Berlin and go to a bar called Tarantino's, uh, do not order the Black Mamba. Uh, it's a specialty drink uh, that consists of absinthe. A Jägermeister and an energy drink, uh, because it instantly turns you into an asshole, <laughs> <laughs> a, a big drunken dickhead. I, I for some reason I I can't drink liquor. It's, it's just a horrible thing. I can't do it. Uh, makes me a jerk. And I'm usually a pretty nice guy, um, but um, yeah, I had this drink and I was at Tarantino's. So I thought I was being cool, but I wasn't. I had a polo on. So what the fuck was I expecting? Did but, you say you're at anyway, Tarantino's? Tarantino's is a bar. It's all based on Quentin Tarantino movies. All right, so it's it's all red lighting and stuff. It's pretty. It's different. It's a different kind of place. But then we went to this like grunge bar, and for some reason, I was like yelling at people about them hating their dads and how they needed to resolve their issues with their dads and stuff like that. And I was just like just hateful, and I was like, man, that's not me. Uh, and I woke up the next day, and I I felt like maybe I had a good night, but my wife said, uh, you know, <laughs> you you, were, you act like a dick. Don't do that again. So um, yeah. Fuck black mambas, don't do it. I'm actually it is the most poisonous snake in the world. So. I'm actually surprised you guys don't have like a a code word or a safe word for when you've crossed that line. 
Like, I, I don't think it would matter. It would matter, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was going to say, once I'm great, I mean, yeah, I have a lot of pent-up angst inside of me, so I just have to let it out on I think it would just teenagers. make you more angry, wouldn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, what do you mean? <laughs> My mama hasn't changed me, it's changed you. Pineapple, who? Ah, you, know? <laughs> you could shove your safe word up your butthole. <laughs> Oh, that's about all though. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, that oh, that was just. I got an image when you used the safe word as pineapple, and then <laughs> followed that up with that. Jason, what have you been up to? Oh man. Uh, yesterday it's been really hot here in Indiana. Like in I, I know it happened. Uh, Justin, summer you know summer that. finally happened. Yeah, summer finally got here, and so um, in a couple of weeks I've got to go out on the lake for this work thing, and so I don't want to just show up as like the great white hope. <laughs> and so uh, I drive back and forth at like two o'clock every day, and of course the sun is only sun tanning my left arm. Okay. So look. I have this like severely dark left arm. Every else, like my face, everything else is just like the whitest it can be. So last yesterday, my wife and I uh, laid out on our porch sunbathing, and that had to be the most awkward because <laughs> we're basically all the the back parts of every building face each other so anytime anybody like walks their dog or just oh. goes outside they're ju- we're just right there <laughs> and so i thought it was going to be a good idea and i was like oh i'll do it every other day for 2 weeks i'll catch up a little bit yeah i didn't go out today so that was the very most awkward thing ever <laughs> I, I'm frightened of sun tanning. I, I yeah. went to the beach last week, and I think my body would just peel away. Like you know, like the sunburn is the worst thing you could be. I, I don't think there's anything worse than that, except for when I got poison sumac that one time. That sucked. That was worse. Yeah, but so. uh, yeah, I'm afraid of it. We're white people, man. We're we're not, we're not good at tanning. That's true. Yeah. So my wife is obviously a way more tanable, darker complected, yeah, oh. than I am. So uh, I have to just do it at like little bits of a time so like 15 minutes here and there is probably going to do me better than the 30 to 45 minutes she actually tanned get, twice yesterday you gotta get oh, your geez. base burn in that's how i start right. Oh, right. Oh. And of course i kept my my face out of the sun just for tonight so you're welcome everybody <laughs> I was <gonna> say. <laughs> keep, keep, keep that face fresh well, so, yeah, i mean yeah, he's you. actually so pale it's like reflecting on the walls behind him right now <laughs> this is true this is these 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 are actually painted blue <laughs> When you aren't sun tanning, what are you doing? Well, actually, uh, a couple nights ago, uh, Sunday night, took apart my NES. Just because. Never did it before. <laughs> nope. And I this never, is my I'm, original. Well, never gotten original, that itch. Yeah. This is my original one. Because it wasn't working. It was, it like went to go record some uh, some videos, and it just what it stopped working. And so uh, I thought, you know, we'd Han Solo it. So I banged on it, and that worked for a little while. And then when I brought it home, it still wasn't working. It was doing, uh, was doing the, the, the gray screen flash, mm-hmm. which is typically that 72 pin connector issue. So I was like, I'm not, I don't have one around to just swap in there. So uh, I, actually, I actually have an extra one, and I don't really? know why. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we don't need to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I started taking it apart, and I was actually surprised that every screw except for two screws are the exact same screw. They're not like Nintendo back in the day wasn't trying to like completely screw everybody over. <laughs> I, said, I, got, I, I got it. Oh, by that basically, wasn't a joke. by by basically, oh, well, they're doing it now, but yeah. um, you know, it was just a normal like Phillips head screw. There's about twenty of them, and they're all Phillips, so they're you know that's nice, and they're all pretty easily accessible. There's cool. no like hidden covers or anything. So I took it all apart, you know, cleaned it out. It was pretty dusty, not as bad as I thought it would be. It didn't fix the problem, certainly. So but I'm basically you took it apart. just. But I took it apart. I got to see what the inside of a Nintendo looks like. So I was pretty happy mm. about that. You got um, '80s man points right there. Right. So it's not. Oh, yeah. it, it, it's not that exciting, to be honest. Um, but it's pretty simple. So it's pretty it, cool. <laughs> you're not. You're not going to mess with too many things if you get involved in it. And it has a capacitor almost the size of a quarter, like. In diameter, hmm. I was pretty surprised about that. Of course, you know modern capacitors are pretty small. Have you yeah. thought about like rebuilding it, like in a custom case, or just I don't know, making you know it... s- th- since it's my original Nintendo. Oh shit! Yeah, it's the original okay. Nintendo that my family had. I don't want to do that, but if I were to find like a top loading one, probably because 
who th- who thought of the spring loading front loading oh. it's the worst design ever you're putting the cartridge in at an angle and then you're putting it straight on it's like that's gonna cause some issues over time <laughs> and so then you have to like pull it out a little bit no duh like it's not gonna work so i don't know i've st- i've got it down here on the floor so yeah i'm not it sure works, nintendo was but... really looking um at people in 2013 and how their NESs are going to be. <laughs> right. But it's still, I mean, it still works sort of. I wonder actually, um, what the, I don't know, the, the, how faulty the original NESs were back, back when they were first launched, especially compared yeah. to how many issues we've had with the last generation of consoles. I wonder how they I mean, compare. Each this generation. one was pretty, this one was pretty reliable. I mean, for years, I mean, we haven't played this thing in like 10 years. So before then, Never had a problem. You'd put a cartridge in there, put it down, good to go. Mm. So, I don't know. It's still, like I said, it still works. I was pretty impressed with that. Uh, but, yeah, it cleaning it certainly didn't help things. And a lot of people just refer to that connector as the solution to the problem. So, it's just a matter of getting a good one of those in and out. And it seems like it's a pretty easy thing to do. Anything else going on? I'm getting ready to go to Texas here in a couple of weeks. So, of course... It's been a it's been a couple of years since I've driven there. I actually drove to California once, and I had to drive through there. And of course, I completely like oppressed the fact that I have to drive through the entire state of Arkansas Ooh. to get how's that, there. How's that compared to driving through Georgia? Because that's my worse. Okay, Th- three times worse. <laughs> Oh. It's it's awful, and it's the whole trip. It's like you leave Indiana, you go through Tennessee, barely Arkansas, mm. and then you get to Texas, and it's just it's awful. Yeah. So on the way back, we're going up to Oklahoma through St. Louis, all the way back to Indiana. So what so, kind of Arkansas mental preparation do you recommend? Drive straight through. <laughs> just <laughs> this isn't happening. This isn't don't happening. Stop. Don't you just, dare stop. Get, just, get like the blinders, like horses have. Just, and just fuel up before you hit the state border. And if you run out of gas, just keep stay in the car. Just stay in the car. Just die. <laughs> just die. Don't get out of the car. It's <laughs> it's the worst. I'm sorry if anybody's from Arkansas, but it my experiences Are there you? have been awful. Uh, the, in my the, heart, I'm probably I'm probably from Arkansas, but <laughs> as far as I know, I've I've only traveled through there. So the only the only thing I re- remember about driving through Arkansas because my buddy and I went to Texas for a wedding one time was going through Texarkana. Yeah. And the smell was like broccoli farts to yep. a wet swimsuit. Like it yep. was absolutely the worst thing ever. And, yep. and we made the mistake of stopping, and we, we won't do that again. Yeah, our, our Kansas, as uh, as Matt is saying there, is the worst ever. <laughs> Good to know. So, I don't think I've ever uh, – my one trip to Texas, I think we went through – well, we went through St. Louis and Kansas. Yeah. Is that, yeah. yeah, and then down through Oklahoma. Yeah, that's yeah. the way we're coming – back but just to get there at a decent time we're just going to go through arkansas as far as i know it mm-hmm. might change i could easily just turn around and go right back up to st louis but not looking forward to it well we'll be worried about you <laughs> yeah we i'll report in don't don't yeah. don't uh <laughs> don't hold me out on that one uh i had an interesting week last week um talked about it a little bit on top video game podcast so i will we'll spare you guys the the engagement stories but <gasps> I was. I just want to say what I was really excited. I was not in the state of mind to be as excited as I was. Um, congratulations, dude! I don't think I officially said that to you. <laughs> you know, you were like a wrote poem, a poem, but I don't yeah. know if it, it really had the same you know, resonance. So, uh. well, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, the two kind of little side stories of this. Um, first, when I picked up the ring, I walked in with like a giant wad of cash. Um, yeah, and. Got nine dollars and ninety cents in change. <laughs> that and makes I just you kinda, feel good. I just kind of looked at the girls like this. You, is this not ridiculous to anybody else? I'm mean, giving like you. Sh- I shouldn't be getting change at this point. And wait, 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 wait. Did you just like burn it? Like, what were you doing walking around with that much money, dude? That's like uh, it was, it was a pretty short. Thing to do. It was a pretty short trip. So I was just oh, moving money around, and that was the quickest way to make just, this happen. Yeah, so. just guarantee the transaction. Right? Yeah, exactly. They're not going to come repo your ring. Yeah, I was like going to deal with the whole checks thing, but the fact that I got change and it took forever for her to count out 90 cents in this jewelry store, uh, 
uh, that kind of made that was that's the moment that stands out aside from the actual uh, ring you itself. Just so got like a watch band or something. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was like, I feel like I should tip you or something because I really don't want this, but this is kind of hilarious. Or I was like, or, or maybe I just should have for the Steam sale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Or maybe I should have brought in a dime so she didn't have the count out that changed, but that would have yeah, been that would have helped. Giant nice. stack of cash and a dime that could have been oh, also yeah. funny. Um. And then, uh, I don't know, it kind of just struck me, and I was kind of curious, Ethan, when I got home this evening, we have a really creepy-ass ice cream truck in our neighborhood. Like, it's a, it's an old, beat-up van. Is there any other kind these days? That was, was kind of my say. question. That was kind of my question. And then, no. but also, do they, ex- do, do they exist in Germany? Um, <laughs> there's ice cream in every fucking restaurant and store in Germany. So no, there's no, I saw you one, one time and the dude was just smoking and there was like maybe like a carton of ice cream. I think it was his. That's, he just had like a, like a logo, you know, that's your new career. Yeah. I, oh, oh, fuck it. I'm signing off guys. I'm out. See you later. See you I need to get myself a minivan. <laughs> I need to get myself a minivan. Yeah. But well, I mean, I'd be good at being an ice cream man. I'm just creepy enough to make people like ask questions, but not creepy enough to like prevent them from buying the ice cream. Exactly. Why? Why have we like ac- accepted this as normal as a society, though? Like these these trucks and the are just they've crossed a line. I feel I don't feel like they were that creepy when we were little. No, when we were kids, unless we just didn't know any better. But I guess we could ask our parents. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. we had one visit our neighborhood every day for, during the summer so yeah I, mean, I don't remember what, him being this creepy and i just no dude. what about the the schwann's man do you feel like the schwann's man's kind of an ice cream truck too like a yeah, bigger version a little of bit that? but he actually gets to go inside your house see that's weird <laughs> i mean that ice weird. cream truck is like within like it's like a hundred yards away from you but like, schwann's man's in your shit <laughs> and you trust him like you'll let him oh it's the schwann's guy don't worry about dave he's fine he's a perfect <laughs> fucking gentleman lo- lo- load all those those waffles into my freezer dave i can't get to him he leaves <laughs> room specific you know specifically for your own body yeah <laughs> <laughs> what are you what are you shuffling my freezer around for, Dave? This is weird. Uh, <laughs> I just wish the Schwans people would lend their trucks to the actual ice cream people, so they had nicer vehicles that aren't as creepy, and they're staying outside. But yeah, yeah we don't have any good ice cream delivery options here yeah. in the states. So yeah, uh, that hit me today. Um, we're here to talk about video games, though, gentlemen. Uh, starting oh, with yeah. the new releases of the week. Um, the week of July 15th is always the the biggest release week of the year. And um, with the release of Kung Fu Rabbit on the Vita, I don't think. <laughs> That's why you bought it, right? <laughs> yeah, this is this is uh, right up there. Good God, there is, there is nothing this week unless you're an RPG fan. Um, Shin Megami Tensei 4, the, what is that, the Demon Hunter RPGs or whatever they're called, um, came out for the 3DS. So that was the... One big name release of the week. Uh, Dynasty Warrior, eight, Warriors 8 is also out this week for consoles. Um, There's 8? Yeah. The keep, Jeez, man. It's a thing. It's got it's, it's got its fan base. It works. I, yeah, I, hey. I guess. So. Yeah. Um, the movie tie-in for the RIPD game, or yeah. what? Zombie. Men in Black. Zombie Men in Black. <laughs> I'm sure that's a. That's a classy, classy yeah, one. Black with ghost. And the only other thing I could find is Time and Eternity um, on the PS3. So, lots of RPG stuff this week, and yeah. So we won't remember this week for anything other than the Steam sale. That's pretty much what it comes yep. down to. So, yep. Um, so it's probably good. Your where whatever misguided purchases you have made, they are the right purchases rather than buying something new. Yeah. Oh. So. So that's my blanket statement. On to the games that we've been playing. Uh, Jason, why don't you start us off? Uh, I've been just playing a lot of just random things. Of course, Steam Sale has been taking up a little bit of my time. I've uh, been Mr. Frugal, trying to stay away from making some poor decisions later on. But I've been playing Cube World just like everyone else, it seems like. Um, I mean, we could talk about that if you'd like. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. Let's get everything else out of the way. Okay, well, I've been playing yeah. cap, Capsize, but not on, on Xbox. It just came out for Xbox. Um, yeah. 
the controller support for it on the PC sucks balls. Yeah. Um, and they were they, they keep tweeting things like, oh, well, I guess we didn't really do enough stuff to support the PC, but here's your Xbox version that works perfectly fine. <laughs> and it's just like, so you're not ever going to go back and fix that? So playing with the keyboard is a little bit of a chore. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's fun, though. I mean, it's a lot of fun. I see the the replayability of it existing. Tell me the, uh, yeah, give me the baselines on... Got Basic, you. basically, it's a uh, side-scrolling sort of uh, point and shoot. You've got certain things you got to do. Um, you you know move around with your you know WASD keys. Uh, you've got certain things that you can uh, collect in terms of weaponry, and you shoot creatures. Essentially, what you're just trying to do is you're trying to go around the planet, uh, save all of your fellow companions that are also fellow astronauts, and just uh, lay waste to everything in your path until you get to your objective so wait it's an astronaut rescue game in a sense it is um they need to market this better because that that has some epicness to it that yeah really it's a it's a lot of fun um it can get real crazy at times too mm-hmm. um but it's fun i i appreciate it i like it um the other thing, of course, I've been playing is Walking Dead 400 Days. Mm-hmm. Finished that pretty quick. I actually yeah. got the first five episodes on uh, Green Man Gaming when they were they were having their big sale. I ended up getting it for like $6.50, which is pretty good. Uh, the first five episodes, which I watched somebody else play those on okay. YouTube. And so um, I thought, well, maybe I should go back and play those. But I just let it simulate the the first five episodes. Okay. That was going to be my so, question is, does it, does it work? It, does yeah. It, yeah. Work it essentially your, just, it? yeah, it just like, if you just download the first five episodes and then go to basically episode six in this case, which is 400 days, it just says like, Oh, do you want to simulate, you know, what happened in the first five episodes? And I just said, yes. <laughs> and it, it, I can't imagine there's, there's a, there's maybe two or three major things yeah. that happen to characters that you see, but maybe not a lot of people would pick up on it. I was just yeah. picturing the, like, one of the writers for The Walking Dead just seeing that that option. Would you like to simulate our game of the fucking year right. so you can continue <laughs> to play this? But but it of course it's it's the 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 story of five new characters. You play sort of each one of those characters in probably about a f- ten to fifteen minute vignette, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, some of them better than mm-hmm. others, and yeah. essentially this is just leading up to the next season of The Walking Dead from Telltale Games. So. Um, it's really good. It's there are moments that are really gripping, just like the the first five episodes. But it kind of leaves you with that, like, okay, I want more. So I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing because apparently they're supposed to be coming out with a new season this, this year. year. Yeah. yeah. But who knows? I mean, but it's mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. And now I just went back through to play each character differently to see how many different things are, you know, changed. Is and it more so far, fu- more fun to be nice or more fun to be a dick? Well, I was. I was nice the first way through, um, and I still had essentially what it comes down to at the very end. You it tells you who is going to leave the camp or who's going to stay at the camp, and I kind of had a split decision between the five the people. The hot girl so, and the oh wait, no. yeah. So I don't <laughs> Which know. Which one was the hot one? I have no. I haven't played this yet. I'm just guessing. Oh, you haven't. Yeah. <laughs> the hot girl, say, the angry old man. I is there say, a Larry? Is there a Larry? No. <sighs> no. Sorry, Justin. Uh, not, not, not so much. I need, I need Josh. <laughs> My heart fails. So, I Justin. hate everybody. Ethan, did you finish this? Yes, I did. Um, oh. And, oh. Um, you know, I've got really mixed feelings about it because it's a very Would good... Would you say it's a mixed bag? It's it's a no I wouldn't uh, okay, I have good. mixed feelings for it a mixed bag would be a little bit different because I mean the, the thing is as a segue to the next season like great. Um, I, I don't know if knowing what I got from it, I would have paid four ninety nine for that. Right, you know I would I mean? agree with that. Yeah, uh, I, I think that they could have they had an opportunity to maybe drop that price a bit because, uh, you know, uh, The Walking Dead is uh, a lot of people talk about it being restrictive in terms of its gameplay. This was even more so. Um, but I will say this though, again, it's a story fucking game and I am like pumped for the next season. So Mm -hmm. that says a lot about this. Like, you know, like I'm like, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed. I didn't know what to expect, but I'm super excited for season two because I like the characters. I thought it was going to be really tough for them to develop new characters and add add as much emotional presence, but these new characters are going to be great. And I think they may even be more exciting than the last batch of characters. So I'd agree with that because I wasn't sure when playing it, like how, like I honestly thought, because you know you play each 
character separately, and that's not really spoiling anything. But I yeah. thought at some point, like, how are you going to play just one character? Yeah. Like, how is that going to work? So yeah. uh, I'm curious to see what they do with, with the characters. So yeah. it will it will sort of it's, carry on over. That's for sure. But you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them that they are using this as as a test to see which character people connect with most yeah. to yeah. affect season two a little bit because. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, they were all about capturing the data during season one and just reacting to people's decisions. So, yeah. um, well, and that's what's really fun about the game too is at the very end it tells you how people did things in the game, and I did it completely opposite of the general population, which I thought was hilarious. You rebel! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looked like people took. I mean, there's not as many dickhead decisions as in the last game, and oh. it looked like people took when I played a lot more dickhead decisions as opposed to like in the last game. I felt True. like. You know, being being a friendly guy was a good thing, and everyone else was doing that. But no, in this one, people were kind of, and it, it's funny because I think season one kind of like settled in on them. Like they were like, "Dude, you can't be, can't be soft in The Walking Dead." Like I right. feel like it's changed people, and it's kind of weird. Like people are a lot more violent and shit. So, um, and this is more intense, I think, in the in that the can, uh, amount of time. You know, I mean, it, like. I think the second, and we won't spoil anything, but the second episode was really intense. It really got you into it. But I think this one's going to start off really intense, really fast. I, mean, I don't think there's going to be that blanket point, you know, where everyone's feeling decent. I just kind of hope they tough. don't try to top themselves just to top themselves as far as the, um, you know, not the scary moments, but the really just standout twisted moments. Yeah. Um, yeah. But mm-hmm. I mean, but again, that's like, that probably comes down a lot to the, the Walking Dead writers themselves because they've yeah. been doing that with the show and the... And the graphic novels as well, so I'm sure they got plenty of options there. But it's just oh, like yeah. I don't want them to. I want them to tell a good story rather than just trying yeah. to top moments from the beginning. Like you remember when we did this in the first one? Well, how about five of those? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and what's really what's really interesting too is that they interlap all the characters' stories because they jump around time wise a little bit. So you're able to be like, oh, that's that one thing from that other character's thing. So it really ties in really well. I thought I thought that was an interesting way of going about it rather than just giving us like one character that you run around controlling you get to see the same thing happen but different in a way it's not like each character completely stands alone but they have these little these little moments that all sort of connect them all to each other which i think is pretty cool um how does it actually compare like if you had to compare it to the rest of the the episodes of the walking dead i mean is it as good as them is it better is it worse is it hmm I would say it's certainly different, which is okay. what I w- ultimately, when it comes down to it, that's what I was wanting. Um, but then again, I hadn't actually physically played one through five. Okay. So yeah. I, I, I'm coming at it gameplay wise, like just real fresh. But story wise, I mean, I watched the crap out of someone else play it. So I was just as emotionally invested into it, you know, <laughs> as they were. But except yeah. for I had no control over what decisions they made. So I will you be son going of a back. Bitch. And playing, of course, one through five, and then four hundred days before the next season comes out, just because I want to make sure the way I'm playing it is the way I'm going to keep God. on playing it. Yeah, I would. I never would have bet. I mean, coming off of last season, I never would have bet that that they would be able to turn around season two within a year. Yeah. And so if they can, if they make that happen, that is. I mean, it's it's really smart. I think they have to keep hitting hitting it while you know while it's while it's hot while the show's hot. Um, and especially like in this potential generational gap, like with the, with the new consoles, I think it's smart to get it out. So they kind of have to, but uh, yeah. hopefully, it, you know, hopefully it doesn't suffer. But I don't know the uh, the fact that they they made four hundred days work, and it just feels it looks like they have their framework for setting up episodes of that set up. So it's just a matter of creating the art and story and moving on. So yeah, um, it it might it certainly looks like it's going to happen. So that's pretty cool. Yep. Um. So. Jason Timber and Stone, yeah. uh, you've described this to me as your kind of bread and bread and butter, um, and then as soon as I said that, he got kicked off the podcast. So let's figure out what's going on here. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, never mind. That didn't happen. So Jason Timber and Stone, you've once described me <laughs> to me as your bread and butter. Yeah, I don't really know much about the game other than uh, you know quick overview it kind of looked like minecraft a little bit to an outsider okay so basically if you've seen minecraft okay mm-hmm. and you've seen cube world it's in that middle okay uh-huh. there's never been a game on the other side of minecraft that i could explain so a lot of you have seen cube world so essentially cube world you're just running around 
you're you know you're Exploring. shooting things up mm -hmm. it has that voxel look to it right and then you've got minecraft which of course is a step above that a little bit um of course more modded these days and you go around you can build stuff right cube world you can't do that timber and stone you can go around killing things and you can also build things which is really cool so you get about you start off with eight settlers and you can um basically gather resources keep these people alive build settlements you can build castles if you want you can build towns if you want but at the same time you're getting goblins skeletons necromancers all these crazy outside forces trying to come in and either destroy all your resources in terms of chopping down trees killing all the animals in the land or actually physically coming and attacking your settlers so you have different professions you have like carpenters you have uh, blacksmiths you have uh, loggers you have fishermen you have farmers you there's like at least maybe 15 different professions and they all have a certain thing that they can do and you can actually switch all your characters to those different professions but that uh, decreases their morale and it's just a lot of fun I don't like my job yeah <laughs> exactly so it's just like well you don't like your job then they you can do this one now. Yeah. and they have different traits which affect the way you give them their jobs because if they're really um, they're really uh, clumsy, then they'll break tools, which of course you've worked hard to get the resources for. <laughs> you, you build tools, you can craft different kinds of stones in terms of like making uh, field stone bricks. Um, you can build stuff with pretty, pretty much just like you can in Minecraft, you can build with every resource that is available in the game. Uh, so, yeah, the big difference that's standing out to me is just like, so how big does your town get? How many people are you worried about? Uh, as long as you have food for those people, you, I've seen people have hundreds Whoa. Uh, of people, which is ridiculous. Like, I, this, there, well, there's one guy in particular who builds these giant castles and has probably about, I think, 100, 120 people. But he has just like thousands and thousands of units of food, uh, which yeah. you can get by fishing, farming, or killing animals, that kind of thing. You can also herd animals, which is pretty cool. There's a shepherd. But can you collect fruit and sell them on a daily basis? Um, you can pick berries off of trees, but there's no like general store person. Are, are I guess you I pulling say. Animal Crossing into this? <laughs> yeah, he's trying to. I see what you're Animal doing. Crossing out of this. I, I was gonna say, like, I I play a game called Towns. Have you heard of that? Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah, Justin probably has, but this no, kind of sounds a bit like Towns. Uh, I, I watched one of your gameplay videos of it. Uh, it looks like uh, um, Towns is is more simulation, whereas this one it looks like. Yeah, you're um, way more hands on with the yeah. decisions your people make. Yeah, you so are. Cool. You are the. You play every character, which is really cool. Damn. God damn it! <laughs> uh, I, I, wonder, I just I, I wonder if stop making is... good games, people. Like, yeah. What happened in those days when Ethan is screwed? <laughs> and this is one guy. This one guy. His name is Robert. He has basically made this from scratch. It started off as a Kickstarter. I got involved in it. I'm a beta tester, and so basically, it's still in beta. It's not a complete game. It will no. probably never be. It's one of those like never, sort of done. Like it's just always going to evolve. <laughs> Because yeah. right now, one of the issues is is when the necromancer spawns, and what they do is they spawn on the edge of the map, so you never want to build anything on the edge of the map. You always want to build in the middle. Um, and so when the necromancer comes, he summons skeletons, and he does that essentially like day one, which is not supposed to happen. The spawning mechanic is actually broken right now. So you're just, your poor eight people, because it used to be six, which is really, really difficult, because you can't really do a lot of things with six people. You have to change the professions around, and they get really tired. Fatigue is also another factor. You have to let them sleep. You can set them on sleeping schedules and stuff. But essentially what happens is, is that it spawns in this necromancer. He comes in and just lays fire all over everyone's campsites, and you're done. And so it's just pissing so many people off right now. And so here I am with like my YouTube LP, like, please don't like not buy this game. It's gonna be yeah. fixed, I swear. But it's taking a really long time to fix it because there's just these tiny little bu bugs that get fixed. And of course, people are never satisfied because they want that instant fix. Yeah. Um, but right now, I'm playing a old, slightly older version of it because it gets released as just an executable file that you can just drop your old save file in, which is really nice. Oh, so wow. I was able to basically pull back on it. So <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a really fun game. Again, if you're just wanting a taste of it, I have, I think maybe he, he can give you a free hit, Ethan. Forty, forty three ish videos recorded of it, about thirty minutes a piece. So <laughs> oh, man. if you want a taste of it, I can 
yeah, drown man. you in my videos. Just a little taste. <laughs> That's uh, oh yeah, it sounds really good. And man, I just and it's like know, it's less than alpha. twenty bucks. So. See that's that's great, and I'm like I, I really, I'm struggling with. There's a lot of beta and alpha games out now, and and more conventional gamers, um, and more casual gamers are getting into it. But but people, beta and alpha, there's 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 definitions to those yeah. fucking words, man. It means the game's not complete. It means right. that you are part of the testing program. Right. Uh, and when you complain about it, it means you are completely disconnected from gamer culture, yeah. the gaming industry, and it actually is counterproductive to the developers because. You know, constructive criticism, great. Testing, great. Being a dick, not so great, you know? So just be fucking patient, bros. Yeah. Be, you're and, cool. You're fine. Yeah, and the forums are a really good resource for answering questions, but a lot of times people will just say the same thing over and over and over. It's just yeah. for someone that has been a part of it pretty early on like myself, it's just really frustrating. And I feel really bad for the moderators, but they do a really good job of being like, okay, all of the, the questions you've asked are in this particular thread. Go look at that yeah. thread. So they're not dicks about it, which is completely you know, great. I fully um, am 100% behind the moderators of that forum because if Robert had to do that and also basically yeah. develop a game at the same time, I, I couldn't see how he'd be able to you know, keep breathing. So oh, man. It's, it's a really fun game. Like I said, it's less than 20 bucks. Um, it's supposed to be one of those really hard games like Dwarf Fortress where it just like oh. at any second your game could just be over like that as much as you've worked on it. Um, I've seen people go hundreds of days in it. That's very rare. Most people probably get to about at the, the furthest maybe day 15 before things really just start going at them. Yeah. Um, but those those days are you know a good number of hours of gameplay. And there are different kinds of... Uh, not quite Cube World esque um, landscapes, which are freaking gorgeous, um, and not quite Minecraft either. There's, there's, it's a happy medium between both games. So if you really like building stuff in Minecraft, but you also want to have this sort of random RPG element to it and management system at the same time, I recommend it. Yeah, that cool. sounds great. There was, um, Ethan, do you remember a while back, maybe a year ago now? There was a Kickstarter for another voxel game that looked like looked kind of like this, kind of like Minecraft, but you would you're building up castles. Was it Castle Story? Yes. Yes. With little yeah. yellow guys. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. what I thought this was when he was describing it at first. Yeah. But then realized Which, they are uh, very s- similar to one another. But of okay. course, Timber and Stone got a little bit of a lead on Castle yeah. Story. So. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, man. Oh, man. This, this space is getting so crowded. Weird. And, and, and the thing is, these aren't like like one time off games. These aren't games you play for ten hours. I mean, we're right. getting hit with yeah. Minecraft games. I I moved away from Minecraft because Minecraft was dominating yeah. uh, my life and my gameplay. You know what I mean? So like all these games are coming out. Uh, we're fuck it, man. Divorce your wives, Justin. You just you sorry, dude. But uh, that just you just burn that money. Just keep let her yeah, keep the ring. Just say, yeah. <laughs> Give me that. I'm glad I got that nine dollars and ninety cents too. So yeah, have a Taco Bell. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's talk about the game we've all been playing, but I want to hear oh. Ethan's stories about Cube World because you would leapt out in front of us as far as uh, the amount of time and what level you're at. <laughs> but you have not played with a harmonica. <laughs> this is a this is a story about Cube World. <laughs> I've played way too much Cube World. <laughs> <laughs> So you got um, in like maybe a week after we did, and so what has happened? What are you what are you enjoying? What are you worried I, yeah, about? This is a weird Okay, this is Alpha. This is an Alpha game. It's a husband wife team, which is impressive as hell because I couldn't imagine making a game with my wife. Uh, you know, one because we don't work well together, you know, and two because I don't know how to develop video games. But anyway, um, you guys were talking about Cute World, and I, I saw it, and I was like, this looks great. This looks cool. Um, I, I was having trouble getting into it, so I kind of thought maybe it was, you know, like fate saying, look, Ethan, you're doing okay with your game library right now, buddy. Like, focus on one thing. Don't worry about it. And then I got into it. I was like, oh, this is fun. I'll just ta- jump in. And I only played for half an hour the first time I played, but it was the second playthrough mm-hmm. that, I de- you know, you're dealing with the progression. You're dealing with walking around this infinite landscape. I mean, it's an infinite fucking landscape. Like, there, there's no end to it. Oh, That's what infinite got means. It. Got it. Got uh, it. You know what I mean? For, <laughs> for nobody that doesn't. But, like, I, I don't know why I've played so much of it. And I'm going to say this in a very <laughs> diplomatic way. 
it's not. I'm not saying this is a bad game. It is a game in development. Um, it's enjoyable. There's 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 that Warcraft like just kind of pounding away at enemies until you level up and move on to the next level. Um, but it, it, it's very plain. It's very bare bones at this point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the potential has got me hooked. Like I can. I mean, this is in the very beginning of this game. This is a a tr- two person team for the most part. Um, you I, I just I can't imagine what's going to happen after this. Like it, it's it's yeah. just incredible. The, the the technology, the 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 program itself to develop these huge worlds without yeah. totally it's killing inf- these infinite worlds. It's yeah, these infinite worlds without an end. <laughs> um, it, it's amazing. It like blows my like I was and Aubrey walked in and she was like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Look at this." I, I showed her the map and and you know she doesn't care, but she was like, "That's actually kind of cool. That's kind of a neat thing." And I mean, it is. It's really. Exciting and um, and I play by myself too. That's the thing. You guys played co-op, which is always yeah. makes games better. I existed in this gigantic world by myself and just kept going at it. And I mean, I I don't know. Something grabbed me. Something grabbed hold of me. Yeah, I, was I can't say. say that I had fun, but I felt like I had to keep leveling up. But the potential is, oh my god, dude, this is this is gonna be a huge fucking game. Like yeah. I, just, I wonder. I just wonder how. Like I haven't really read much on his future plans, but I just wonder how dense the world is gonna get. But um, I also, in my more recent time with it, actually, my solo time with it since we've played multiplayer, um, I I really had enjoyed just kind of seeking out caves and trying to find um, stuff to mine. Just because right. uh-huh. I don't know, it gives you a reason to explore the landscape and just try to go into the nooks and crannies and see. Have see you if found it, emerald yet? No, no. Oh, yeah. oh, I've got a butt ton of emeralds. I've got too many. It shows yeah. exactly what I've been doing. I, so I haven't lived Mine. yet because I don't have emeralds. You don't have, you gotta, dude. When you walk into a cave and it's glowing green, you found emeralds. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good thing. Oh, um, but we did get a four player game going last week. Um, I think the only frustrating part was the fact that we realized there's a. There's one spawn point in the world, or at least yeah. at least on the continent, I guess, or the biome. Is that the yeah? That's what they're calling them. They look like continents yeah. to me on the big map. But um, so when we had um, Aaron and I were pl- had played the night before and gone off exploring a couple hours in one direction, and then we got Josh and uh, Jason into the game the night the next night. They spawned in the middle, like an hour away from us and we had to yeah. just kind of fight our way back to getting up getting to meet up with them luckily though they were hanging out near a castle and we tried to um uh, go in and, and take down the, the ruler of that because it took me a number of hours before i walked into a like a part of the world where it gave you an objective so that yeah, was yeah. kind of you know it is pretty aimless until you kind of make make your own objectives that way but if you do seek them out there are you know there are reasons to it, it's not like you're gonna have a big uh, quest log or anything like that, but there is stuff to do. Uh, granted, I'm too low level to pretty much accomplish any of it, but you know, I get distracted by tall mountains that I can just climb for no reason and then solve oh, the puzzle, get into the yeah. top of them. And I made, f- I was like, you talked about that last week, and in my mind, I was making fun of you guys. I was like, oh, climbing, like, go fuck yeah. yourself. Like, that sounds stupid, but it is so fun. <laughs> yeah. Climbing is fun. I don't, like, why? But it is, it is a puzzle. It's, uh, I mean, they just, there's, you know, like, and it's gonna make me mad when people say, "Oh, it looks it's like Minecraft, right?" Well, no, it's not like Minecraft. Mm. Uh, they're they're thinking outside the box. Um, yeah, it's QB, but this is going to be the game for people who said, "I liked Minecraft, but mm. I wanted to fight. I wanted to yeah. feel like my fighting was worth something." That is what this game is gonna be. Now it does um, it does have actual like crafting, or you can build a house and that kind of stuff. Is that right? Not yet on the house, I don't think. Okay, it's, just... it's working towards that, but that's one of the the. Okay. Features that Maybe that's a promise in the future. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the really crafting wasn't... mechanic it has now, you can customize your weapons. You can yeah. you can that's build. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, and you can like customize the look of them as well. You add um, these little cubes, and they can either you know add uh, like HP to your weapon, or they can add like fire effects and that kind of yeah. stuff. And, and and it looks different. You know, yeah. like I made myself big old claws. You know, like ah, oh, it looks good. It feels good. Cr- Somebody in the chat made fun of it, but you know that's okay. <laughs> Krug Dog's pointing out a big feature that I haven't seen yet, but do either of you have a 
hang glider yet. I have purchased one. I have not used it yet because yeah. I think my computer would explode the second I jump <laughs> <Yeah>. off the cliff. <laughs> Your computer is having a little bit of Because trouble. I would take off and then it would just be blue skies where it says, please wait, and then I would just crash into the earth because the game technically doesn't pause whenever it's rendering the land. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I'm one uh, like experience point or skill point away from getting the hang glider. Okay. Um, oh, I'm, oh, are so you, excited. Jason? Are you riding riding pets yet? Because I know Ethan was riding a car. I'm not riding them, but I have four of them. Okay. <laughs> it's like and that's like Pokemon. You're just trying to yeah. collect them all. Right now, yeah. I just I just yeah. have a battle a battle horse named Turbo Dragon. I can't quite <laughs> ride him yet. Nice. But, um, yeah, I've got a chicken, which you would appreciate, Justin. <laughs> uh, a crow. As well as a cat and something else that I can't I, remember. Maybe a horse. I have food for a monkey, but I have not seen yet. I've yet to I've see a monkey. I've never seen a monkey. Found the monkey the other day. <laughs> I, I actually spent. You want to hear a story? This uh, is an amazing I, I, moment. And I apologize to anybody that was watching me stream. I apologize to anybody that watches me stream in general. Races because it's <laughs> random as hell. But um, I swam across the ocean. Because you can get a boat, it's a lot faster. But I swim across the ocean for about an hour and a half, and I was like, "Why the hell did I do this?" Because, like, once I was twenty minutes into it, I was like, "If I turn back, you fuck." Because when you're lost in this game, like when you like commit to a direction, you go in that direction, or else you're kind of fucked. And I swam across the ocean. I was like, "Ah, this was stupid. This was stupid." And then I got to an island. Um, and it had a it had a village in it, and the very first enemy that I saw was a monkey. I was like, "Oh, it's a monkey! Great!" And then it fucking attacked me. <laughs> it was it was a tough monkey, but yeah, dude. I mean, and the the squirrels and the raccoons are no joke either. They yeah, just right. they come up and they just start boxing you, and just it's like, dude, I wasn't picking a fight. But you you yeah. said something, Ethan, when I I logged on and and saw that you were ten levels ahead of me, and I'm just like, where? And in this week, how did you level up so quick? And um, you kind of made the point that just kill everything. It doesn't matter how cute they yeah. are or how docile they are. Just kill them all, get all the XP. Well, and, and some things will be like, you know, just you, you'll kill one like squirrel and it gives you like one XP and then you'll kill another one and it gives you like 12. Yeah. It's, it's all very random. And But have you guys ran into to the crabs yet? No. Yeah. Those are mean SOBs, I tell you. <laughs> The crabs and anything that shoots just, like water magic at yeah. you, like fucks you up oh, so all, hardcore. Yeah. It's all awful. the mages. All the mages rule me right now. Um, yeah. What do you guys playing as? What classes? Uh, warrior. warrior. Yep. I think we're both berserkers. Oh, are you? Jason okay, and I. Cool. Yeah. So I'm playing as a ninja now. Right. So came in as the assassin, the rogue. Um, I'm the stealth mechanic is a little bit odd. I'm not <laughs> sure how to use it yet. So I switched to ninja. The ninja has a backflip where he jumps backwards and throws shurikens at his enemies and it's it's it oh it obliterates people like i want to make a highlight reel of just me back just flipping. killing fucking animals like that because i killed sheep i killed horses i killed uh, a llama um those yeah, llamas are tough man yeah they are tough yeah they're not they don't fuck around man N- nothing on this this in this world is like a 100 percent friendly unless you go to the towns and you find the pet villages now there's some docile animals but as soon as you look at them the wrong way and by look at them, I mean stab them. Uh, they're on <laughs> quick. Do you guys quick. find it weird when you go into towns, when especially those like trading districts, and everyone surrounds you because they just want to talk to you? <laughs> it kind of freaks me out. I feel I feel like a celebrity in Cuba. Welcome. Yeah. What's your name? And, and then they just stand there, and then you're just like, do I need to talk to all of you? But luckily, the little green things will tell you if you need to actually get something yeah. from them or not. Yeah, they those give you quests, don't they? Yeah. Or they yeah. Get, they give you things on the map to go explore. Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise you're just discovering the named areas of the map. But, yeah, if yeah. they if they could apply the biome generator to Minecraft that they use in Cube World, that would make Minecraft a whole different game. I mean, yeah. Cube World, those worlds are beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could just stand there and just look around. Well, me, after Unlike five minutes, Minecraft, which is just straight up ugly. Oh, yeah, it's very, very <laughs> ugly. Well, you know, it's just, yeah. it, it, you no, kind it of was, get used to the same sort Cube of... Cube World's very, strike, very striking. And so I wonder yeah. if, if I keep playing Cube World, am I eventually going to get used to sort of knowing what kind of generation there's going to be? Because so far, I haven't really seen one thing that's the same as another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I'm really, really curious to see that you know kids like grass are you know different colors and of course you know there are things in minecraft that sort of let you sort of have different shades and stuff like that but it's just i've never really seen it to the fat that to the point that is it where it's in cube world just the variety the variety of animals that are spawning around the variety of enemies that come around 
it's pretty impressive. And like Ethan said, for a two-person team, it, it's pretty nice. Yeah. And if you can get in and you can get, you know, the alpha, because that's what this is, if you can purchase it, I say go for it because you're going to have a lot of fun. Yep. Yeah. And, and then the multiplayer aspect, which isn't easy, it's not easy at all to set up, but if you can get <laughs> involved in that, the, even oh, better. I mean, I had yeah. I had a hell of a time playing with you guys the other night, so that's just going to make that game even more fun because yeah. you, can, you can have a variety of different people just, you know, like any other sort of um, RPG sort of, you know, MMO kind of thing. So, yeah. When everybody else in Cube World has buddies to hang out with, like I notice you need to see these troops of mages oh, yeah. right. and I like they do a good job with oh, that. Though with the, I mean, it's I think it's really smart that they yep. they added the other groups of adventurers and some friendly and some not friendly. I think it. Yeah. I mean, it it makes your single player experience a little bit more enjoyable. I also. Yeah. I don't know. I had, you know, from my up and down week last week, I f- kind of found playing this game single player was just uh, really almost. It was just really calming. <laughs> I just really enjoyed. Like, I don't know. It, it wasn't t- totally mindless, but um, I didn't have to work too hard at it. I just could just explore, and it's a totally different feeling than like ex- the tension of exploring in Skyrim because yeah. you just never know what's going to jump up. Like, every time you die in Cube World, I kind of laugh at it and just revive. Right, because you're, you're not losing much. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. lose anything it, other than your, where you are and damage to that enemy? No, I don't think so. I don't think it takes any sort of gold or any sort of uh, experience away from you. The only thing, yeah, like you said, you lose is the progress against the enemies that you might be fighting. Mm-hmm. But and I hope it stays that way because I think that's a, a lot of fun because you're not so overly concerned at surviving. You're just wanting to, you know, try different things and try to kill things and explore and stuff like that. So, I mean, I can see how this game might not be for everyone. But like you said, Justin, I just whenever I play it, I'm not recording it as an as a an EP or anything. Just be, so basically because it's my oasis from everything else that I'm yeah. playing because I don't have to talk about it. I don't mm-hmm. have to. I don't know if it's really good for an LP necessarily, yeah. but when you're playing with other people, it's great for streaming. Or if you're just playing by yourself, other people can get involved, obviously, in, in, in the, the Go Twitch. Go over there. So, so you can climb that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But it's it's just one of those things where whenever I'm playing it, like I'll say, okay, I've got until 11 o'clock to play it tonight. And then I'll look at the clock and I'll be like, oh, it's midnight. But yeah. then I'm not like, oh, I can't believe I spent an hour and that that was a waste of time. It wasn't because it's just allowing no. my brain to process certain things. Because I had to go west for an hour. Right. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is, but yeah, backtracking is particularly fun for me because my computer's not that great at the moment. So I turn around and I'm like, all right, we're doing this. And I just hit the button down and then it just says, please wait, but stuff is still attacking me. And I'm just like, I've gotten really good at, I'm like the Stevie Wonder of Cube World. <laughs> I can fight blind and, 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 and do really good things with it. Yeah, because you know Stevie Wonder fights people all the time. I, I still think though, <laughs> one feature that uh, the game still does not have music. So um, if you are playing multiplayer, have someone play some music. JP. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was yeah. gonna say I, I realized that if if I stream that game again, uh, which I think I'm gonna take a break away from it because right now I think I've seen, I haven't seen all the biomes, but I've seen mechanically as much as I want yeah. to to know that this is a game I'm gonna invest time in. But it's lonely as hell when you don't have music yeah. and you don't have people to play with. And I'm kind of like, ah, I, you know, I, I want to be, you know, and not that I was sad playing the game, but I was kind of like, oh man, like I need but something Jason, else. We can cut some highlights from our stream where you're playing the harmonica and maybe submit some potential soundtrack <laughs> options to them. You know, I'll, I'll be happy to do whatever I can to help the game out. <laughs> Ethan, when you aren't cube worlding, what are you doing? Um, so last week I had a really huge um, victory in FTL, and if anybody visited the site today, which you should, uh, I did a Brotabulous Moments dude, in Gaming. Dude, Brotabulous came back. Brota- came back hard, you too. Should, you weren't so, expecting that, were you? So Ethan yeah. like says, I have this video that's done, and it was just titled Mystery Video. And um, then it starts with his FTL intro, but then slowly but surely... The theme music for Brotabulous Moments in Gaming builds, and all of a sudden we're in the intro, and I was just, I was super pumped up. I, I it was such a good, like that whole moment was really good, um, and I, I had to do something with it. And, I, and the whole being able to download MP4s from YouTube is awesome. Uh, that's really handy. I'm glad we know how to do that now, and we'll do that more often. But um, uh, the the thing is, I, I was, I was. If you talk to my wife, she will. She calls it the spaceship game, and the spaceship game is a bad game. 
Uh, why the spaceship game is a bad game is because when Ethan plays a spaceship game, he loses touch <laughs> with reality. Um, I got in a really weird lull last week after that victory because I got really concerned about space in general. Uh, I, feel, I feel like NASA is underfunded. I feel like we would not be prepared if an asteroid struck us. Um, and the only thing that made me feel better was to play FTL and actually feel like you know I was doing something. So I decided that you know I was going to try to parlay that into actually like you know constructive gaming, and I've been trying to get all the different spaceships in FTL that you can get. Um, and all of them, there's different you know, now you're just means collecting. of getting to them. Yeah, I'm, I'm collecting. I'm, I'm, I'm collecting spaceships now. I want to be prepared for this uh, you know, asteroid-themed apocalypse. And you know, I can jump in my... Uh, I, well, I'm not going to name all the ships because that, that'll be really dorky. Um, but not that my obsession with it wasn't dorky enough, but I, I've been playing the absolute shit out of that game. Um, and I, I have struggled to get them all. Um, I actually... The, the toughest one to get is a crystal starship, and I had every factor that i needed to get that and then i fucking lost it in the end so i was pissed about that but i i backed away from that game too like on i think <laughs> thursday my wife came in i was still playing the game she was like wait, like when she left i was playing the game and when she came back i was playing the game i was like no wait a minute wait a minute like there was time in between like i did things <laughs> in between i made a sandwich in between and i got a milkshake and, and I, an I, ice cream I, cone so like, i wrote I'm doing e- productive things and i wrote an email to justin saying i can't do an article today <laughs> because <laughs> i was playing up to you well I, yeah i gave yeah so i'm third i usually do cheap and dirty gamer on thursday <laughs> and uh, i had a news that i had just sitting up there and i was like dude i'm not like i'm not in a place to do a cheap and dirty gamer so i was like i just use that news i had there but it was weird man that game has a really weird um but awesome way of just grab a hold of my ding dong and just hold on till it's done with it you know what i mean that's probably not the best way to explain that but and you, and you paid for it so and, yeah yeah and I pay more too. So it's a clean um, transaction. It's yeah, absolutely. So yeah, no, I've been again. FTL is again taking a break from it, like I did, um, because I'm at a Good. point now where I'm getting a little bit like I got jealous because I saw a guy on Reddit who'd beaten the game with every single ship on normal. Like I felt like that normal victory was huge, but that's nothing. No one gives a shit about that. So my day in the sun kind of ended. Um, but I we're still proud of you, though. Just so you know. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. Um, the moral victory, at least. Yeah, it felt good. It felt real good that day, and I and I feel like it made a good video afterwards. But uh, but yeah. So Fez, everyone was excited about that last year. I think like everybody was kind of excited. I guess. Uh, uh-huh. I thought, you know, it's on sale. Let's check it out. Uh huh. Uh, Except for me. Yeah, I was gonna say not my game. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It's yeah. It's yeah. It's it it's plucky. It's whimsical. Um, it is whimsical. Art style's fine. Uh, not my game. I, no, you know what? I don't. Not. I don't want to invest the time and effort that people have invested. I'm never in proud of people for doing that, but yeah, I, not no. Uh, not from time to time. I, I, I talked shit about it last year. I know I did. There's podcasts you can go back. I talk shit about it, and that shit still stays talked because I just not my game, man. Not my thing, and that's fine, dude. Great job. It's it's amazing mechanically in Good terms job. of just the things about it. But I'm, I, I played it for about half an hour. Like, oh, okay, this was enough for me. I'm yeah, fine. I mean, there are times when I, you know, I get excited uh, enough to uh, send you a link to a game that I know uh, you'll like or at least appreciate in some fashion. Um, but never in a million years would I have s- advised you to play Fez. It just no. there's, <laughs> it doesn't. I have like any puzzle Ethan games. Hooks. Like I like puzzle games, but to me, it just I, I don't know. I, I didn't feel like I was solving puzzles i felt like i was looking for cubes and i was moving and i just the whole change in reality was cool but i didn't love it like it just it was i don't know it wasn't my thing and that's fine phil fish is a great guy can't say that with a straight face oh, oh, no, you, no, no you can't no you almost oh. you, you but you you said great with conviction. It was the guy part that you seemed to be confused yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, a great ass. A whole, I know. You know I whatever. Will. I get it. He's he's a tortured genius. He put a million <laughs> hours into a game, and he did it to himself, he, though. Yeah, he he, he did it to he, himself. He just this you could tell, like you can tell the insanity slowly leaving this guy, and like his you know, like you know, and I and if I saw him in real life, I would I would probably say, hey, I didn't mean all that stuff I said. But then I would turn like to the camera, assuming that I'm on camera, and I'd say, I'm just kidding, I do. Um, I but think I, yeah, uh, I don't know, it's not my game, but I'm glad people liked it. That's yeah. fucking fine, dude. Love it. Well, Love he it. Sh- he he tweeted like this graph for like you know like <laughs> pre yeah. like pre release like, and then like release slightly bigger and then like steam sale <laughs> and i'm just like people well, seriously waited until this game got cheaper there's a reason for that i think yeah 
That's yeah, why but, I did. Okay, it. Well, well, you know, it came out at ten bucks. Like when that sure. showed up on Xbox Live Arcade for ten bucks, that shocked me. I was like, I thought they had fifteen dollar Xbox Live Arcade game written all over it, and mm-hmm. um, so I, I think it's that was a ten bucks was kind of a steal for that game. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, there was there was definitely a crowd that. Wasn't gonna spend the ten bucks on Steam because it's been out so long. But yeah, we'll, we'll they'll try out Fez for five bucks. We'll see what all yeah. the fuss is about. And yeah. I think Jordan and Chat kind of described it well uh, as it's incredible. It, maybe it isn't fun <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. because I I have tremendous respect for that game. But I didn't even like I kind of got to the halfway point with that game and before I put it down because I was like, okay, now I'm gonna have to break my brain to solve this, or I'm gonna have to start looking up answers. And I was like. You know yeah. what? I respect yeah. this game. I had fun just exploring, um, but yeah, I don't. That really isn't much of a yeah. an Ethan Moses game. And did you see the article where he talked about that he's not going to let Microsoft take the game, like the sequel, if he makes one? Yeah, he, like, he teased the trailer like, for Fez Two at E3 and said, "Yeah, it's, he's." They said, "What platforms are you going to?" And he says, "Not Xbox." Yeah. <laughs> like apparently he got pretty like bent, or at least he feels he did via yeah. you know Microsoft. So. At least he's putting out his patch if he hasn't already. Like they'd yeah. finally like he wouldn't patch the game because it costs him ten thousand dollars to right. patch the game, um, and uh, they finally he, dropped the fees. So he's gonna finally he can't patch now. It he's got all that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, he should be doing okay. He's he can't be the tortured poor no, you know, yeah. video game developer anymore. And that's going to be tough for him because he played that really well in Indie Game the Movie. And I know they didn't that yeah, they didn't characterize yeah. him as well. I mean, they 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 overdramatized him, but still he just didn't do he could have gone from Indie Game the Movie cuz he said after that they made me not look great, but then he went after that and said a bunch of dumb shit, you know right. what I mean? I'm like, dude, Phil, I get it. You're, you know, awesome, but come on. Stop talking. I say that about myself all the time, but I'm, I'm going to I'll cut you know. that Snip it for him, your advice for him, and just send it to him. Yeah, I, well, yeah absolutely. Come on, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> the dickhead game developer doesn't fly with me. I, I, I get it. You know, it's, <laughs> you can't make a good game and then be a dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're learning that, aren't we? I, don't know. Well, learn that. I, I just started I picturing the, the Simpsons episode with the Thompson. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dickhead developers. Ugh. Okay, well, what else have you been playing, Ethan? So I, I also played another game that I actually liked better than Fez, and it had even less gameplay. Uh, Proteus. I don't know if anybody has heard about that. It's a an art music game, and it is the perfect game for oh. anyone. It is the perfect game for anybody who likes to smoke the, <laughs> the, the pot cigarette. Um, Just I, I, my my wife came in when I she keeps walking in when I play these games, and she has all these mixed feelings about exactly what I'm doing. She'd almost rather me be pulling someone's spine out than playing some of the games I've been playing as of late. Well, they have a game for that. Oh man! It, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but That's like I'm in Proteus, you're you're walking, and as you explore the environment like the music is changing and so you know there's animals coming around you they make little chiming noises and whatnot you're just like just m- m- walking around and just chilling out and the music really pretty and whatever and i did the exact same thing i did in q world i started swimming across the ocean i guess maybe i'm trying to get back home maybe that's kind of my thing you know what we're seeing here but um I, I really like i really dug it again i got it cheap it was on sale um it's not a game that i would say hey go and buy it Unless you just, like, your brain is just killing you, and you're like, dude, I need to cut off, like, all thought. Um, And with that, you know, and again, I don't love art house type games. That's what this is. Um, But this was cool. It was was kind of a fun experience. There's not a whole lot about it, you know, with it. I mean, I don't really know if there was a goal to the game. What made you Uh, try it? When? Uh, I said, what made you try it? Like, I want to go back last week and talk to Ethan the Ethan Moses that is like Dude, bouncing. I, was, I want to play some Fez. I want to play some Proteus. I'm like, where the fuck is Ethan? I was high on nothing last week, but I was still high and so, like I just wanted to be like part of the planet. Like, you just wanted like, to be high, mother. Like Gaia, come and release me. Like it was a weird moment for me. Um, I don't know. I don't know what made me play it. People had talked about it. I, I saw an article on, uh, I think I believe Rock Paper Shotgun about it. I was like, oh, let's check it out. It was cheap. Um, and it was cool. It was interesting. I mean, again, this is just one cool. of those games that could be put up there in terms of art. I mean, they were going for that. It's not a game game, but um, it, you know, you got you got to kind of dip your feet in those. I mean, you can't you know kung fu people naked all day long uh, in Sleeping Dogs and then you know okay. act like that's the premier you know artistic game. You have to kind of you know explore some other options too. So oh, um, I think yeah, I've no, s- hey, take it for a spin. Why not? I've seen you play Sleeping Dogs. You've uh, you've definitely. 
made some I've made it artistic, haven't yeah. I? It's my <laughs> it's my mas- yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's your masterpiece. Mm-hmm. And I completely <laughs> forgot about Proteus. I actually thought you mistyped it and then we're gonna talk about Reyes again. Um oh, but yeah, no. like No. But that's another there's another good example of yeah. one of those type artsy type games, so huh. um but uh and then and then tonight I streamed Dungeons and Dreadmore. I, that's my <laughs> after FTL. I beat FTL on normal. Dungeons and Dreadmore is a game I'm going to be doing. I'm still using the beefy challenge rules where I it's on the highest difficulty, and all random skills. And I saw uh, I'm actually doing pretty well with Coop. Coop, I, I've actually I, I name my characters um, from anyone who's watching in chat. I name my video game characters after them. Um, and actually, Justin and Verdian were very successful in my FTL, so I'm going to try this yeah. again. Verdian was not so successful in Dungeons and Dreadmore. I was real quickly. <laughs> I was really surprised in your uh, Brotabulous uh, Photoshop for FTL that you didn't put my head on the woman. I kind of expected that. No, but, that's that's you know, come on, okay. you know me better. Than I was that. Spock, well, maybe you don't. but that's yeah, fine. You. Yeah, I made you Spock. Yeah, I almost made you uh, so Scotty. I don't know. Does does Dreadmore have an end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, okay. you, you, you know, it's it's funny how similar those two games um, are built, like mechanically, like kind of ha- how you go about playing the game. Like, essentially, in FTL and in Dungeon Dreadmore, you want to spend as much time as you can on a level before you move on to to ensure that you've got as much you know um, resources as and, and as best weapons as you possibly can and also to make sure your you know ship and or your human is leveled up um and I, bl- I don't remember how many levels it is um but at the end you fight the dreadmore himself or the king dreadmore whatever it's like a skeleton looking fucking guy um and uh i haven't even gotten close to that dude uh <laughs> the best run i had was actually on the stream uh, it's actually one of the highlights we have on our youtube channel where um, i'm doing really good and i walk right into a monster zoo and for people that don't know what a monster zoo is it is a zoo full of monsters it's actually pretty fucking self-explanatory and they they killed my ass so fucking hard it was awful um it was great so i love that game i i, I man that, that that's a good game that's a really really good game I played you for three re- hours today. Holy shit! <laughs> you also reminded me how good the music was in that game. Like it's unbelievable. It, it, dude, it has a good tone no the music. entire time. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's it should be like the most understated part about roguelikes, but like consistently across the board, all the the recent ones have have great music. So that's yeah, kind of weird. Um, kind of a light week for me, gaming wise. But let's see what we got here because a bulk of my time was. Was just Cube World, uh, the arcade challenge this week. I thought we went retro with Galaxian last week, but this week we're playing Berserk. Do either of you know that game? Oh yeah. Ooh. Okay. All right. So like, what would this be? It could almost describe it as a prequel or an early version of Robotron. Yeah. Um, but it's the best part about this game is the sound effects because. Mm-hmm. You know, this game was made in 1980, and you essentially just have a randomly generated kind of map with a couple exits, and robots spawn, and um, as you get a higher score by shooting the robots, the robots become, they move faster and shoot back at you more, um, and, but Am the I entire am? time they are just, they're just, they have this stupid little robot voice that says, you know, you know, catch the humanoid, and it just repeats, and just... Because when we do this, do these arcade challenges in the office, the machine is, you know, on the entire day. So you just hear these random sound effects, and it's some of my, some of my favorite sound effects because it is so, it just sounds like a retro arcade. It is so perfect for that. Am I insane, or is this that that commercial you linked to a while ago? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm a, that I, commercial is hilarious. I have a lot of conversations about this game. I played a lot on my Atari, um, but it's really difficult. Your character moves really, really slowly, um, and but it's kind of fun because the robots will shoot each other, and if you or the robots touch the wall or touch one of the robots, they die. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like things can just get out of hand really, really quickly. And then if you if you try to take your time, this just this smiling bouncing ball appears, and he just bounces across the entire map until he until he kills you so it has that that effect of you can't you just got to kind of sprint through each level and then uh again we're playing it for score and it's uh it's totally different really just really retro feeling and i i'm i'm digging it we've uh 
we were playing some modern games there for a little bit, but I'm glad we're we're reaching back into the back catalog. So, um, so yeah, go play Berserk on. <laughs> I don't know where you're gonna go play it. Um, <laughs> back in the future, back in the, back in the past. Go get your Atari 2600. The um, the other game we've been playing in the office and uh, actually live streamed it last week. Nilmar, uh, one of our regulars uh, in chat. Finally got to play a game with uh, Justin Gifford and I. We played some Worms 2 Armageddon. Uh, since then, I've played yeah. Worms Armageddon on PC, and I think we played Worms Reloaded on PC also this week. So I've kind of got the gamut of Worms games. Um, I used to be really, really good at this game. Played it a ton, um, especially my uh, towards the end of high school, first couple of years of college. But... Your, your worm skills will diminish over time, and mm. especially when you're playing for the first time and forget what the controls are. Cause I, yeah, I mean, you, you, you forgot that your worms aren't supposed to jump in the water, right? No, <laughs> no, they're not, especially... I, I had everybody. A, man, I confused the, the, the fire key, the fire button with the jump button too many times to count. And, um, and then just, yeah, getting the whole trajectory in the... In the the, the power behind all of your shots, get, figuring out all the physics again and getting that to feel right is it, it just takes practice. That's the only way you can get good at worms. And then when you are good at wor- worms, random shit happens and it, stuff always goes wrong and you get screwed over by the placement of, of your worms and the weapons that your opponent gets. And it still, it still plays well. Like, especially, I don't think I can play it much one-on-one anymore but if i've got three or four people to play with it's still a blast Mm -hmm. and um it was also kind of cool to go back to one of the really old versions because i mean they release a worms game it seems like every two years yeah and it's just been a very iterative game and you don't notice the gradual improvements to the physics and the artwork until you just you go back and you play the one that's 13 years old versus the one that came out two years ago uh so um i still think I kind of actually prefer the old one, but that's because uh, that was the one I, I grew up playing. But uh, track down some worms uh, if you haven't played in a while. It yeah. still still holds up. Don't play the 3D ones, though. Those are dumb. Or even better, go back and play Scorched Earth like we talked about. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever played that. Oh, that's, oh, that's the... Okay, no, that's the... Is that the tank game we were talking tank about? Game. Yeah, the tanks in the mountains. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think I probably just, just called there's... that tank game. Oh man, I can't remember what it is. Actually, somebody did kind of a remake. Uh, it's on Armor Games right now. Yeah. Um, of that, it's pretty pretty cool. They did a pretty good job mm-hmm. on it. So we should dig up, see see what the closest playable version of that actually is. And I mean, if you were playing Minesweeper earlier, Ethan, you could play. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan now has opened the door to stream anything. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, actually, I I well, I should. He's gonna be. Uh, He's going to be streaming tic-tac-toe. He's going to use his webcam and just I draw almost, it out. I almost started streaming uh, me perusing Facebook, so um, I'm glad I didn't end up doing that. But, yeah, Minesweeper is tough. Shit. That's real <laughs> tough. <laughs> well, we'll save that for save that for next week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started out the week playing Mega Man Unlimited, <laughs> um, which is the fan-made next 2D uh, retro Mega Man game. It beat the shit out of me on mm. Sunday. It just... As Mega I, Man does, yeah. It, as, as Mega Man should do. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I was reading up after it, and, you know, I didn't want to blame the controller because Mega Man games are just hard, so I didn't really think anything of it. But there were a couple moments where I felt like, you know, the control was sticking a little bit. Like, Mega Man would continue to run a little bit after I let up of the... Uh, of the D-pad, or I had a lot of trouble jumping onto ladders because you have to hit up when you are in line with the ladder, and it just I, the timing just seemed off. Something wasn't right. But I read up that the mapping, the the gamepad mapping, is a little bit off if you use the in-game editor. So I downloaded XPatter and remapped all my buttons, and it played. The controls were just tight as hell. Nice. Um. The result being, I got a little farther in some levels, but I still haven't seen a boss yet. <laughs> Two hours in this game, I have not made it to one of the Robot Masters. Video Ac- or it isn't proof. <laughs> accented by the fact that when I was playing Nail Man stage... Nail Man? Showed up, n- Nail Man. Nail Man. Um, 
I got to a point in the level where it had the gate. And so I walked through the gate, and it didn't do the, you know, the, the long, skinny hallway before you go through the other gate to get to the boss. You went through the gate, and Nail Man's there. And... I get super hey, excited because yeah, I, I get super excited Welcome. and I start I start shooting him and I'm I'm struggling and I'm struggling but he blows up and it seems like it was kind of weird too because his energy was never on screen and I didn't know how I was doing and it I didn't seem like I um, killed him too much but then so he died and I kind of sat there and nothing happened and so I walked through the gate to the right and there was just like this the end of the level it just was like a sun in the background and then this you know, the the end of the platform. And I'm just kind of like sitting there like, are they doing something weird with the end of these levels or what? And so then I, I was like, I had nothing else to do. So I jump off the platform and then the rest of the level starts up because that wasn't actually Nail Man. That was just the little mini boss. And um, would, then I would promptly you, died. So Would you say you got screwed? <laughs> screwed by Nail Man. <laughs> well, I'll accept that answer. That's uh, <laughs> that. um I, I really like that game, and um, I do. I I think this year I want to try to beat a Mega Man game that isn't Mega Man Two, at least out of all those classic ones. So um, we'll see. I mean, a lot of them are on the Wii U console, um, and there's nine and ten out there in Unlimited. I'm gonna stick with Unlimited for now, just because I just really adore the project. I love that that how well the game came yeah. out. I think the level design is fucking genius. It just you can just see the care and effort that they went into to um to put this all together yeah, um, the music's great yeah every little i mean capcom should should help these guys out do do something with this because i mean hell the regular Mega Man team has moved on anyway so mm-hmm. um but uh but this game's also just <laughs> it's hard, just hard as hell there are two levels rainbow man is just a fucking bastard man His- rainbow man <laughs> I think you should just say each. And see if he see game. how he reacts. See how he reacts. Let's see, let's see if I can do them. How many I can do from memory? So Rainbow Man, Comet Woman. That doesn't uh, get a reaction. Nah, uh, Nail guys, Man, but... Tank Man, um, Glue Man. His Glue stage man. is a his, Glue Man. <laughs> his stage is a is a bitch. Uh, Jet Man. I'm oh, missing... you, fuck you! No, no. <laughs> his, his head is literally an airplane, dude. It is... <laughs> That's so dumb. Um, I mean, were, were were any of the Mega Man oh, bosses named seriously? <laughs> was there like a like rock? There's Tri like, Tri Nitro like, Man. Nitro what the hell is a Tri Nitro? <laughs> well, there was already a Nitro Man, so they had to change that at the last minute. Like, three down. times the Nitro. And the dude in the bottom right. Who was the dude in the bottom? Yo-Yo Man. Yo-Yo Man, yeah. Oh, I kind of like that. <laughs> he, he sounds unconventional. I, I like his shit. Not Yo-Yo Ma. Yo-Yo, Yo-Yo Man. <laughs> and so I did the best on Nail Man, Yo-Yo Man, and Glue Man stages. So, um, oh, man. I'll stream so, that from time to time. Um, I don't know um, if the chat audience is enjoying the game as much as I am, but uh, I like... I don't, I don't mind... Um, playing these games uh, just repetitively until I break them. So um, we'll see if the if I stick with it. So uh, Beyond that, I don't know if it's really a game, but kind of got into the um, the Steam cra- trading cards in the last couple days oh. and um, got... Uh, Coop and I were selling our trading cards today. Wait, what? So, you can sell them for what? So, yeah. So you... Collect trading cards on Steam now. Uh, the regular ones, like some of them, will drop in game, and some of them you'll have to uh, acquire from friends or through the marketplace. Um, and so, yeah, we got a. We I had a bunch of duplicates from the Steam sale and went onto the marketplace and it just you go into your inventory, you look at the card, and it has a button that says sell, and it brings up a basically a graph of how much this has been selling for for the past week or month and kind of advises you what to price it at and you set how much money you want to make off of it or how much you want to charge for it because steam takes a little bit of a cut and uh yeah the as of now the steam trading cards are selling for about 20 cents a pop Woo! so i've got uh i've got like 65 cents in my steam wallet right now oh man what are you gonna yeah. do with it probably buy some cards with it <laughs> you buy some cards with it or wait till a five dollar game comes along and it seems like I'm getting a deal by getting a dollar off. 
I, I got to say, as silly as I thought it was at first, Steam knows how to keep people buying yeah. games and playing games they wouldn't usually buy because I saw a number of games. Uh, achievements are one thing, but I saw a number of games that I haven't played for a really long time. Um, I was like, oh, trading cards, that's really good. I'm like, no, Ethan, no, no, it's, you don't do that. You don't do those things. You don't really care about achievements, even though you kind of do. Um Damn, dude, they're they're sinking their claws, man. It's it's awesome, but yeah, weird. It's, yeah, there's their community features are definitely getting built up. It's kind of crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was. I I mean, I was nine out of ten. Uh, I had nine out of the ten uh, summer sale cards, and I had to find out that I had to get that other one. So I started realized today was or well, yesterday was the day I started talking to people to be like, do you have do you do you have the Bioshock Infinite card? Because that's the only one I need. I can give you I can give you my Tomb Raider cards. And it was just like, what fucking year is this? What yeah, is just, just, can you can you download them and put them on the spokes of your bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> I want the little, little, little 3D little ones too. I mean, the only sad thing is, like, in the, in the future, when you die and you have to leave things to your kids, you're not going to be able to leave, like, a big cardboard box full of Steam cards to them. You know? <laughs> oh, shit, this is worth a lot of money, you know? I want to see how what these cards are, uh, what their uh, rank is in Beckett's. Like, how which one's the most... Uh, oh, yeah, shit. How, how my football like manager 2013 card compares to the Honus Wagner card. Did you buy football manager solely for that card? No, no. So when you no. spend, yeah, it gives you to them ran- randomly. Oh, okay. The Steam sale, like every ten dollars you spend, gives you a random card. But yeah. there's out of these ten. But you, get, it's the cards you can get through the Steam sale. But there's also the ones you get in the yes. game, which yeah. I was kind of confused on at right. first. But uh, no. which okay. seem to be somewhat tied to achievements. But like, so there are ten Borderlands two cards, and I only like four of them will drop in game for you. So it'll be four random ones, and then your friends, four random ones will drop for them, and. So you kind of mix and match from there. Hmm. All right, that's the theory. Or you go on the marketplace and you drop some real yeah. dollars to get it. And then, of course, it gives you badges that you can put on your profile that no one really ever looks at. And yeah. yeah. But yeah. Hmm. But I'm gonna have more badges than you, so yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I was, that's what's gonna come down to. I've got cards <laughs> if you want them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to the stuff we're working on. Um, Let's let's start with Jason. Kind of give everybody a little bit of background. Um, Jason's obviously been hanging out in um, our chat for a while, been supporting our our shows for a little while here. But he has his own YouTube channel, and we just kind of we've been talking a little bit offline and wanted to get him involved in the podcast and uh, potentially doing some videos for Horrible Night. But he's gonna he's got a couple side projects going on. Anything you want to talk about? Well, uh, talked about earlier, sort of taking apart the NES. The reason for that is because. Um, recording a podcast with my friend Andy, who's also a YouTuber, called The Evolution of Gaming, which mm-hmm. is basically what we do is we go back and we try to play uh, old games on the actual original hardware. So together we have basically accumulated pretty much every major gaming system, and we basically go through and start playing it. If we've got a save game, we try to show you a little bit of variety in the game. We tell you sort of the history of the game when it was developed, some interesting stories what happened when we were playing it, some memories kind of thing. And so we record those in batches because it's just a little bit easier to get together and do that. And so Sunday we recorded eight, which basically covers the gamut of an entire month. And so, you know, just the variety of games. We ended up playing this random game called Hoops on the NES which at first I thought it was going to be like a Michael versus uh, Bird, like Jordan versus Bird sort of <laughs> ripoff, but it wasn't. It was surprisingly a different kind of game, and it actually had women basketball players in it. That's not allowed? I know, and it was very progressive <laughs> for the time, I thought. And then How were their fundamentals? Not was, on my watch. It was, Sorry, that's my the favorite women Futurama actually, joke. <laughs> the women were actually more aggressive than the guys were when it came to like fouling and pushing people out of the way. But of course it's an old ass game. So mm-hmm. the mechanics of it are just so poor and um, it just, it, it was just hilarious. And Andy's actually in chat. He's Mangler one Oh three. Um, and so that's, Hi, Andy. that's Hi, been Andy. a lot. That's been a lot of fun, you know, just doing that sort of talking about, cause it's interesting. Like um, he and I didn't grow up together. We sort of met each other uh, a number of years ago, less less than 10 years ago, but you know, we love playing games. And so it's just funny to see the, like 
weird stories from like his childhood and my childhood. And of course, we work our way up, and we're actually talking about the fact that once these new consoles come out, like the 360 and the PS3 will be a part of that evolution of gaming. So we'll actually, you know, start incorporating a little bit of those sort of newish titles that came to the 360 when it first came out. So um, I've got basically what it comes down to is I've got, you know, a Dreamcast, I've got an Xbox, I've got the NES, and I think. I think I had some other thing, but he's got a Genesis. Uh, we borrowed a Super Nintendo. So it's like we're actually hooking these things up. And what was really funny about the NES is when I hooked it up and I turned it on, it didn't make any noise and it freaked me out. <laughs> why, like, is this, this, why is the cartridge not spinning up? I know. I was like, this thing should be making noise. And I thought it wasn't going to work. I mean, of course, it, it wasn't working that great. But when it was working, I was like, hmm, this is really weird to sort of see that evolution of, you know, when CD got you know, introduced and stuff like that. We played Turok this past week, so all these things are going to be... Uh, he posts, he publishes nice. videos on Tuesdays. I publish them on Fridays, so that's been uh, a lot of fun. I, of course, do Timber and Stone on my YouTube channel. Um, that's something that I would love to be able to stream at some point, so that way if anybody had questions, I could sort of demonstrate things right then and there. I uh, really haven't got into streaming, but I'd, I'd be happy to. And then on top of that, um, basically just been uh, playing Minecraft like I normally do. And I would I would love to see other people maybe like on a, a server or something. We've got – we had a server about a month ago. I'll have to see what the status of that is um, because we immediately got distracted by other games like Cube World. Um, yep. But <laughs> sure. um, More cubes. But, yeah, we've talked about especially some of the other um, multiplayer games that we play on a regular basis just yeah. – posting that info for people to join in but i i yeah definitely minecraft portal yeah. server makes a lot of sense and, and yep. the reason for that is because they just released uh 1.6.2 which basically changes the mechanics of zombies so basically when you hit a zombie it attracts other zombies and then that attracts even more zombies so when you're playing with a i don't want to play people, that version <laughs> yeah it's pretty it gets pretty terrifying at times but it's a lot of fun and they're different you know it changes it changes the way you play minecraft it changes the way you do stuff at night it changes sort of you know your sleep patterns and sort of how you build you know your buildings and stuff and i think it's i think it's a lot of fun so cool they've, they've done some pretty interesting things i think with minecraft to, to sort of keep it moving forward in a progressive manner that pulls new people in, but also gives that variety. Um, yeah, and right, Ghost basically is 100% right there. Skeletons do not miss when they shoot at you. Which <laughs> I don't think there's a single person that has not been like super pissed and frustrated from a skeleton shooting them when they least expect it. So, especially, uh, yeah. But I mean, it gives it gives variety to the game, and um, you know, I, I've just been trying to to sort of accumulate more games during the steam sale to sort of get myself a, a library of games that I can either play with you guys on multiplayer or just sort of play off, off, you know, yeah. air to record and sort of give a little bit of impression. So I, I'm trying to expand my horizons because I tend to sort of stick with games for a really long time and just play the crap out of them until they get updated. Well, we'll put some peer pressure on you by making you talk about games every other week on this show. So um, we're happy to help you out there, yeah. but you'll be, you can look forward to seeing. Um, we'll we'll definitely be posting on our Facebook page and Twitter uh, when they have new episodes of Evolution of Gaming. Yeah. Um, and then keep an eye on uh, Jason's YouTube channel for his Let's Play videos. And then do not be surprised when he has his own Reflex reviews and Game Curious videos on the Horrible Night uh, channel as well. And then we'll probably get him live streaming as as soon as we get all that sorted out. But yeah. we're Happy to have you on board, man. Thanks for yeah. uh, jumping in. It's always it's always a good time. Ethan, what are you working on? Nothing. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, uh, videos came back in a big way uh, this past week. Uh, trying to really get into Desura um, and really kind of explore those games because those are games I've, I mentioned before that... Like you'll see on Steam Greenlight, but a lot of them have actually already been released. Yeah. And there's some pretty decent games. I've got a um, Survivor Squad Reflex review that'll be coming out on probably Friday or tomorrow. No, tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow. We'll see. I don't know. I, I forget what we talked about. Um, <laughs> but I'm trying to do more of those because Justin has been pumping out a shit ton of those. And, and I feel like I have the time to do so, and I just haven't been doing it as well. Um, Bro Tabulous Moments in Gaming. Um <sighs> brought that back today i'm excited about that i've, I've been uh really excited about those i've actually taken it back to what it was originally about which was 
um, just moments in gaming where you got really pumped up, uh, and it was just a group of you know fictional characters coming together and, and you know overcoming some sort of um, obstacle. Uh, FTL being uh, you know an example of that. Um, so really doing that. Um, we've got some interviews lined up that um, I, I you know will you'll be seeing more about those uh, coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, but been all over Kickstarter, so I'm gonna I'm ta- I'm, people on Kickstarter just be prepared because I'm emailing every one of you every time I see a game that I like, and um, <laughs> I've already got a few set up, uh, so those will probably be written. Yeah, do you want to talk about the next one? Talk, talk about that game discovery you made this week? Um, so yeah, I definitely want to. Um, Forsaken Fortress is essentially uh, I, I wrote about it on Monday, I believe. Uh, mm-hmm. And I found it on Kickstarter. It, 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 it got kickstarted. It got fully funded back in December. Uh, it was like you know 120,000, um, well over what they were looking for. And it's a post-apocalyptic simulation game where you're both building your base and defending your base, but also going out and scavenging. And just it, like I was pissed. I didn't like. I was like, what the? Where was I at? And um, so I immediately, you know, emailed them and was like, "Hey, let's let's chit chat." So we may be talking uh, with them uh, probably in, in a written interview. But I mean, I'm uh, the concept of the game. Um, every time I I, I think I want to make a game, it, it this is the kind of game I would want to make. You know, and I love, you know, I love towns. That's uh, you know, big part of my gaming. Um, but I love the post-apocalyptic you know aspect of, of building up a town and and surviving that kind of stuff and i think that you know i haven't seen a lot of simulation games in reference to that and this game looks fucking amazing like if it can come through on 50 percent of its promises it's going to be great like it's going to be an awesome game and again i don't know how i missed it like i really don't know how i missed it i'm going to ask them how i missed it because i, I should have <laughs> Um, but if you if it's you ever I mean you need to get on like I- anyone that's on a Kickstarter you don't have to fund I, no one's asking you to fund every game you see but I mean check it out because there's some amazing projects coming out right now yeah and uh, it, I mean again I say like I hate it because like there's too many damn games coming out but I mean it it's really exciting to see the type of game that you fantasize about playing actually coming out coming to fruition and you not having anything to do with it so uh, this game is definitely one of them look up Forsaken Fortress. Um, uh, you will be, if, if, you'll be, you'll be pleasantly surprised. I was, I was like, holy yeah. shit, I can't. Yeah. And, and the concept art's amazing. Like, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's a, the, the picture I have on my news article. I was like, oh, that is so freaking awesome. And it has, I believe it has zombies in it, but it is not a zombie game. So just cool your jets, bros. There's, there's <laughs> all kinds of different mutants in there. So, um, but um, yeah, so yeah, and, and just we're trying to get out there. We're trying to figure out Gamescom. Gamescom is coming up in August. Uh, trying to get out to that uh that's my big big goal so whether that's as an official press person or an unofficial press person um <laughs> it, it doesn't matter i, I want to get out to that because that's a huge huge european game conference and um I, I didn't even know about it until two years ago you know so um and it's it's comparable to e3 in terms of europe so um I'd love to check that out. I'm sh- I mean, I don't know if anybody will understand what I'm saying, but um, I'd love to check it out either way. So yeah. uh, look for more information about that as well. Yeah, when you go out there, make sure you uh, pay attention to how many ties people are wearing. <laughs> <laughs> see, see if that trend continues overseas. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they'll all have ties. They'll have multiple ties and scarves on. That's a big... If you, this first one you thing. see, just run up and yank it off the dude's neck and see, <laughs> see where your day goes from there. I'll be out quick. Yeah, yeah. So Horrible Night does not support assault. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yet, a lot of my works. I'm been doing more video stuff. I've ever since I did the uh, Awesome Knots video, I've been just trying to f- find different ways to do uh, different types of highlight reels for us. Um, I keep experimenting with our daily highlights, but those are still pretty short. Um, and then when my Mega Man game curious went a little bit sideways because the controls bailed on me, um, I've n- now since played that game twice. And I'm probably going to be working on some sort of compilation of all my deaths uh, in that game just because, man, I mean, I, you could literally feel pieces of me dying every time um, that I thought I was making progress and then would forget how to jump or just all kinds of stuff. Um, I think my next uh, streaming playthrough that I'd like to do is actually I want to play through um, the story mode of Mortal Kombat. Just because mm. that was a game that I reviewed a couple years ago when it came out, and that story mode had a big impact on on my outlook of fighting games, and um, so I'm gonna probably give that a shot probably starting after the show, 
and see how that goes. Um, still got my Skyrim stream going, but that'll be just kind of once a week, random, good, just kind of chilling out, uh, exploring Skyrim. We'll see how how far that actually gets because that won't technically ever end. So, have you been? Uh, how have you been treating Lydia? I have not. Yeah, I haven't played in the last week. So, um, Cube World ate up my Skyrim time. So in she the just she's just waiting for the abuse to come she's back. She's still grounded. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do enjoy going back to watch the video of her getting caught in that door trap about three or four times. So, oh. <laughs> poor yeah, it's, Lydia. It's tough to watch. Poor um, Lydia. On the, yeah, I mean, she kind of brings on herself though. But. On the podcast front, we've kind of gotten in a groove. Uh, uh, Night Force is obviously on its way. Um, look for appearances by JPT and Aaron on a regular basis. Uh, we'll try to keep it a three-man show when we can. Um, and then um, we're top video game podcast of the week is, is going weekly at this point. We've got a good rotation going there as well. Um, but you will see a return of some random uh, Curse Checkpoint episodes in the near future. Um, namely our Animal Crossing <laughs> episode is forthcoming um, and then there will be a Vita Bros episode to get caught up on um, all of our Vita purchases Ooh. this year um, so Ethan if you would like to balance that out with other topics that might be more interesting to more than two people uh, those being the two people on the podcast yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> um, feel free to would throw it, out would it, be more, would it be more appropriate to call that a Vita support group <laughs> <laughs> No, we're positive. It's Vita Bros. I was going to say that. But be, between that and Animal Crossing, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we need to, uh, you know, Jace and I will do a, a, a little checkpoint about. Hey, you can make fun of Vitas, but, but I'm telling you, <laughs> Animal Animal Crossing sales, they're a force to be reckoned with. I mean, they are. That game's doing well. I mean, it's if pretty. You, I will be. I will be tuning in just so I can sort of try to understand what the hell you and Aaron are always talking about back I can, and forth. I, I can promise Because it sounds were... like you are on crack when you talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it did. You, you sell fruit, oh, you no. check on like chores. Oh no. You, enjoy you, you literally sound like a, a meth head, like you're just running around <laughs> doing things to keep yourself occupied. <laughs> it's just funny that I'm better at chores in that game than in real yeah. life, but... <laughs> Oh no! See now, chat's got to the point where they're counting how many times I mentioned the game. So yeah. <laughs> I'll take that as a as, that as a sign. Um, and then I've got some editorials still churning around my head based on The Last of Us. I hope to get uh, at least one of those articles out this week. Trying to get two editorials out a week on the on the site, but Cole and uh, Justin Gifford are also working on some stuff. Um, so look look to see more original creative written material on, on horribleight.com as well. Uh, but now, gentlemen, I want to hear your game pitches. Um, looks like Jason has our first um, ba- base game to start from. Uh, this could get weird pretty quickly, but where do you want to go, Jason? I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there. I think Ethan could probably run with this. I want a unicorn RPG. Now, whether you play as the unicorn or you play as the humans trying to defeat the evil unicorns, I don't care. Maybe both. Maybe give give the game some variety, because everyone's always like, "Oh, unicorns! They're so pretty!" Like, no, unicorns have to be the most evil, demented creatures ever thought of. Could you, and that's... literature, cinema, TriStar. I mean, their their logo terrifies me. I mean, do, have have any of you actually watched the last unicorn? Yes. The movie's oh, yeah. terrifying. The, the movie's ma- terrifying. The movie is terrifying. Yeah. It's yeah. it's too much. But if you could put that in a video game, yes, then, I'm, I'm all for it. I just want you to make a uni- a unicorn RPG that I want to play. Exactly. Like, it's got to be a it's got to be unicorns of war, or something like that. What is it? Is it unicorn third, third third person cover? Actually, I just want to see Marcus Phoenix, Phoenix's face on a unicorn. <laughs> That's all I was really good. Or riding yeah. upon a unicorn. You know, I think it's it's quite the curveball to throw at people when, uh, especially the demographic that's like, you know, eight to, to twelve year old girls. They're like, oh, it's a unicorn game, and the unicorns are just bloodthirsty, just, just <laughs> ruining everybody. Just, I just, I wonder what sort of direction that would push the next generation. And I like the idea of an RPG uh, <gasps> unicorn game, but I kind of, I, I was thinking like when I saw that, I was like, you, know, you remember in Final Fantasy VII when you raise the chocobos? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And everybody spent way too much time doing that. Like I yeah. feel like that for some reason that that's just reaching out to me. It's like ah, you know what? We should just raise a bunch of unicorns and see what happens with them. Or <laughs> see what happens. Why don't you raise unicorns? Yeah, 
ra- it's Does a racing game. Do that anymore? I mean, probably not because they don't exist. Uh, <laughs> or, or what about Deal of the Story? You know, I remember people always tell me that, like, oh, the reason the unicorns are exist don't exist anymore is because Noah didn't have room for them. Well, why don't we deal with that moment in a unicorn? Oh, shit! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The unicorns just getting left behind and the giant wave coming and just, sweeping over them. Yeah, Actually, they, I could like that. They, could, they, they could fly, though. So I like that new existed. plot line. I thought that was a Pegasus. Yeah, that's different. Uh, that is, that is Pegasus, different. You're right. So that's terrifying even more yeah. so. <laughs> Can we but I like a Pegasus, a Pegasus unicorn. The Pegasus is the boss yeah. oh, of the unicorns. <laughs> By the way, the, the opening scene of, of the game, it basically needs to be a small girl from like, you know, the early, you know, 1990s opening up her Lisa Frank <laughs> book and coming to life. Thus, the unicorns are starting to roll the galaxy. <gasps> oh, shit. Oh, stick oh, 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 oh. Okay, so Lisa Frank. Okay, Lisa Frank. All you see here's here's what happens in the beginning. You see these like factory workers like stacking up all these Lisa Frank <laughs> fucking binders, and then like this really skeezy scientist like looks in the camera and goes wink and injects something into him, and then it fast forwards to uh, these little girls opening them up and like, oh mommy, thank you. I've always wanted this. Oh, I'm gonna be like my friends. And the unicorn just like. Whoa! <laughs> I'm my life. And just fucking runs rampant. Like Resident Evil style shit. Like just all up in everyone's grill. You know? I mean. Do they call you Chris Redfield? Who would who would see that coming? Oh Nobody my gosh. Anything. And then Lisa Frank like gets called like, Lisa, something's happening out of the factory. And she's just like, God damn it. So you play as Lisa Frank. <laughs> you play as Lisa Frank fucking killing the unicorns that have erupted from her fucking... She's the only one that can stop them. <laughs> she's, the only, she's the only one. And you, you... draw. There's like a yes. Mario Paint aspect to the game. <laughs> well, I mean... Oh, in, in, Lisa in this... Frank... Has... Okay, then you pull. Po- you want to pull Pokemon into this? Because then Lisa Frank has to draw other fantasy creatures <laughs> onto binders and find the serum to inject into the fucking folder to bring more into it. You're the only one, Lisa. You've got to do it. I gave that up a long time ago. Uh, is that Solid Snake? What was that? I don't know, I don't know what that was. It was Solid Snake and, and, and fucking oh, man. Rex Colt Powers and a little bit of everything. But, oh, it's dude, basically so just like an this. indirect sequel to Kingdom Hearts using all <laughs> those characters. All the Lisa Frank. <laughs> I mean, we, we can start with David Hayter doing the voice of that dude, but for the sequel, we better get Kiefer. Oh, once man. We, once we made our money. That's uh, wow. She's the. I mean, if you think about it, she, she is the unicorn expert at this point. If they were to show up again, yeah, her role uh, in our society has completely changed. So, <laughs> I don't know if I can top that. Um, Ethan, I got two mentioned. Which one do you want me to go with? The first one or the second one? You gotta go with the first one. <laughs> okay. So back in our necromancer discussion uh, during Timber and Stone, I just started to think about how much of a dick that necromancer is. And then I could not think of a positive use for a necromancer. Is, are there, are there nice examples of necromancers? So, um, probably an RPG, um, where you play as a a philanthropist necromancer or a nice necromancer. How can you use your powers to resurrect the undead for good? Hmm. That's actually like a legitimate idea. (laughs) Like I'm actually kind of sort of, I, I missed I'm, the point. Entirely. I'm starting the unicorn Kickstarter right now. So. Okay, <laughs> it's on there right now. Um, so, so you're a because the thing with necromancy, you you always assume that everything comes back evil. But I mean, yeah. why can't why like is the resurrect everybody's pet first dog that they lost? Yeah. Just for a moment, just to be able to, like, okay, think about all the people that couldn't tell their, this is going to get really sappy, uh, all the people that couldn't tell their, like, the loved ones, like, I love you before they died. You, as that philanthropist, could go and do that kind of stuff. Or you can just uh, resurrect people's, uh, you know, uh, family members and use them as, as zombie slaves um, <laughs> uh, to, to build fences for, for, you know, them. Because, I mean, that that's really important in the zombie apocalypse. Okay, how about this? You actually have to be fueled by evil, but you have to do your best to, like, basically hide that side of your business. Like, masturbate it away? <laughs> no, I'm thinking that okay. you do, like, oh, these shit. PR... I'm on a different playing field, then. Yeah. Go ahead, sorry, go you ahead. You do, man. like, these PR jobs where you, you... Like I said, you resurrect, like, the first 
the first pet that died for somebody on you, mm-hmm. or you resurrect like a, a, a really famous celebrity or world leader or somebody important, but you have to build up so much evil power to be able to, to do something like this, that you also have this side business that is basically doing all the evil things that necromancers do, but you have to keep them a secret from, so this is, this is definitely a sim, a simulation game, but so you, you have, have to- you have to go around punching puppies and then mm-hmm. saving dead puppies. Yes. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Yes. I could do that. I could be on. And I think the game starts it, off yeah. with that, with that conflict of, um, the, the puppy you're resurrecting is actually one you killed and mm. the kid tries to find you out. So, mm. and then there's unicorns and it's a much better game. True. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Maybe maybe just you know mix those two together a little bit you know <laughs> Throw cross all franchises. Cool. <laughs> Throw in Teen Wolf as well. <gasps> Why not? <laughs> just don't say Teen Wolf for the Ethan. Don't say Teen Wolf for me. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's going to do it for this week's Night Force action report. Jason, successful debut, except for when you bailed on us there for. A I don't know what happened there. That was very strange. <laughs> Ethan, um, great enthusiasm to start the show. You're kind of stiff in the middle, though. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll, I'll work on that. <laughs> I'm gonna end. I'm gonna end all these now with evaluation reports. That's what everybody likes to hear. <laughs> um, Justin, you did a fantastic job. Best host we could ask for. Chat, you're incredible. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't do it without you. Couldn't do it without you. Thanks for uh, listening in tonight, and we'll see you guys next week. Later on.